Good morning, family. Today we are starting our announcements with a segment that we call IBOC Cares. The deacons of IBOC are anointed men who go above and beyond to serve God by serving our ministry. And yesterday they came together to support our very own Deacon Cato. Now, Deacon Cato's father lived a long, full life, and he was also a deacon. He passed away last week, and early yesterday morning, some of the deacons got together to make the drive all the way to Kilbourne, Louisiana. And yes, Deacon Charles was driving, so you know they were praying the whole time. Our deacons arrived at Bloomy Shade Missionary Baptist Church to show support, to show love, and to show that IBOC cares. It is such an honor to be here. Uh, and on behalf of the Inspiring Body of Christ Church and Pastor Ricky Rush and the deacons of the Inspiring Body of Christ Church, we're just here to represent and celebrate with Deacon Cato, our brother in Christ, uh, it, it's an honor just to know that we can come so far and still worship God. I think the Amen. older the older I get, I realize it doesn't matter the situation, but you can still give God the glory and praise Amen. in the midst of a bad situation. Amen. So we thank God for today. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm happy. Uh, my dad lived his life, but I wasn't finished. There was so many more questions I had. How to be a more loving father? Be a better husband. I had questions on how to be a better man of God. I had questions on how to get that hamburger steak recipe right. I didn't have it right. I didn't quite get it. You know, I'm gonna tell on my wife when I called. I said, babe, I said, uh, Dad just transitioned me with the Lord. She said, oh Lord, the hamburger steak. <laughs> Our deacons got to fellowship with the family, they got to look at old pictures, and it gave them an appreciation of the man that Deacon Cato grew up to be. They prayed again and made their way back to Dallas, and they are right here this morning serving again. So we want to give a big shout out to Pastor Rush for your awesome leadership, and we want to give a big shout out to our deacons for constantly showing that IBOC cares. Dear Future Me, I don't like the coronavirus. It makes a lot of people sad. But let me tell you something. The devil is a liar. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Dear Future Me, I have to admit, times have been tough. But here's what my teachers at the University of Dreams taught me. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. So I'm going to stick with God, and he's going to see us through. Dear future me, every time I turn on the television, there's always bad news. That's why I like to watch messages for the inspiring body of Christ Church. When I listen to Pastor Rush preach the word, it gives me hope. At the University of Dreams, we're taught that there's always something to be thankful for. So instead of complaining, I'm going to look at the bright side. Dear future me, you had every reason to give up, but instead you got up. You made up your mind that one season of your life would not define your lifetime. Your faith has been tested and proven, and now it's time to focus on the future. If you know anything about IBOC and the University of Dreams, you know that the word normal is not in our vocabulary. And last Friday, we had a K4K5 Children's College graduation that was out of this world. The title of the program was Dear Future Me, and it started with a praise dance to encourage parents and families. Hey, you made it through the storm and the sun will shine again. Our scholars kept the program moving, speaking with confidence and charisma. Noah and his ark were on full display as we demonstrated how we teach creative Bible lessons so that our scholars really understand the Word of God. 
Mother Goose was in the house with our K-4 scholars and they showed out with their reading ability and comprehension. Our parents even gave some testimonies about why they love U of D and it was amazing to hear. Check this out. Hello family, my name is Allison Nelson. I am the mother to Jalise Jaira and Jalir Nelson. I've been a member since high school, the first church that I chose for myself. It's always been a great connection with you all. Um, becoming pregnant with Jalise, off top, I always knew she's going to Ibot. Uh, I need their help because I knew the, the the teaching, the loving, the training, all of the things that you did from other members and family members and how their children acted. I mean, what kids do you know when you say, hey, how are you? And they like, I'm blessed. You know, so I always wanted my children to have that foundation. When Jalise started at six months, she had a heart condition. She had severe allergies. And so I was just really nervous being a first time parent. Everything was assured to me. The love, the care that you gave uh, to her, all in her down, praying with her every day. Every time that I left the parking lot, the worry just went for me and was like, you're okay, go to work. She's in good hands. Fast forward, I had two more children. He was a preemie, my youngest boy. And um, you guys took care of him from four pounds up. You wouldn't even know the issues that he has had. And I say all this to say that I appreciate you guys in helping me raise my children, being a family outside of family to my children. The super cute scholars of K-5 were in the house to let everybody know that they were on their way to Sister Moffitt's first grade class. Listen to this. That's what I'm talking about. The program continued with our fourth and fifth grade scholars and Sister Davis showing problem-based learning with real life math demonstrations. And then our first graders got everybody energized singing and dancing to a song about winning souls to Christ. Our science department did a presentation about the COVID vaccine and we debuted a fourth and fifth grade music video that was directed, produced, and edited by U of D scholars. We had a first grade commencement speaker who encouraged the graduates to give a big effort and then our K-4 and K-5 scholars were able to walk across that stage. So once again, we say thank you to all of our parents, scholars, educators, and members of IBOC. We have lived through some tough times, and we made it. Glory to God. Lord, this year we saw a lot of impossible things take place. We never thought that the places we loved and cherished so much would be taken away from us. But we learned, God, to call on you and depend on you. Our children walked in this building every day with adults that became parents for a long time. From the moment they got out of cars, getting temperatures checked, the time that they walked through halls, the only greetings, the only love that they felt, the only power they felt all day long were from, in some cases, strangers who became parents, guardians, and loved ones. Each of them, Lord, came and had food that was prepared and safety that was prepared, germ-free environment as much as we could possibly do. We thank you, Lord, that this year we did not have any incidents, accidents. We thank you so much, God, that our loving administrators and guides of our school took it to the max every single day tirelessly. Keep them covered and help them to understand that we have opened a school to, to close a prison so that we can help free someone, God. Free his or her mind and the spirits and bodies and soul so that we can continue to be a facility that serves you and honors you. In Jesus' name, until next year, amen.